So we, um, I just uh, take the um, insects. Ideally, if you can get your pest, uh, that's best. So your local things you're dealing with, that's the primo uh, that you can you can use. But you can use insect frass. Um, I mean, I bet Brian's got some byproduct from his uh, from his stuff over there uh, making isopods that you could use. Um, but you can use insect kind of leavings from insect production and uh, you put it in the rice when you put the rice out in the forest so that those predatory insect uh, fungi have something to eat in the rice um, and so we do that um, and then uh, you can also add insect frass to the IMO3 stage um, so just some and you don't need a lot what you can do what people do is they overload and it creates this really nasty super nitrogen rich um uh, material because insect frass has a lot of proteins in it too from the pieces of the bodies of the insects so you don't uh yeah less is more in this context you don't need a ton uh, of that material because you don't want to turn it into some you know super high nitrogen stinky kind of manure material that would be um that would hinder everything so uh, a light dose of um carapace uh for a food source for that one part of the whole ecosystem and really that's that's what it is we're just increasing diversity by increasing um you know bringing in the food source of one other type of fungi um it's a beautiful night so ideally you're grabbing pet literal live pests from your plants uh you know in your region and then you're putting them into that inoculation and i don't know if people are are grasping the the magnitude of what he's saying because there's a lot of pests out there that there is no answer to and then there's a there's like a vacuum of information even online um yeah. where where you're not going to do a quick search on how to handle grasshoppers or locusts uh and find this information this is truly um something that he basically stumbled upon <laughs> and nature so, taught me 